survived pilot told what he experienced in the Bermuda Triangle. Is there any place on this earth that has more myths than the Bermuda Triangle? The jet involved was a Beechcraft Bonanza, which is a single engine craft. The people on board with the pilot, Bruce Gernon, were his father and business partner. The aircraft departed on 4 December 1970 from Andros Island in the Bahamas and headed towards the northwest of the Florida coast. If you draw a map, trace the line and connect the dots from Island of Bermuda to Puerto Rico and to Miami and then back to Island of Bermuda, you'll find yourself tracing a triangle. This sinister polygon is known as the Bermuda Triangle. It is known for enigmatically swallowing over 2,000 ships and 200 jets over the centuries. This was a typical flight that Captain Bruce had made dozens of times. The journey usually took about an hour and a half with no hiccups and perplexing phenomenons whatsoever. The captain was no more concerned than you would in your daily trips to work, but this time was different. They would meet very challenging situations. Strange things happening right after the takeoff. Bruce ascended the jet and started gaining altitude. When he was at an altitude of 1,000 feet, he noticed a small dark cloud above the aircraft, but the cloud kept growing. The cloud was actually getting bigger in size. Bruce ended up flying through it and they came out just fine. However, when they were at an altitude of 11,500 feet, another mysterious and massive cloud appeared in front of them. Perhaps the best decision would have been to go around it, but the captain had no other options but to fly through this bizarre thing. When the aircraft entered that semicircular shaped cloud, it got as dark as night all around the plane. There wasn't even a single sliver of sunshine that could beam through. This wasn't a storm cloud, nor was it raining so the captain started to get anxious. Justifying his anxiousness, a sudden flashes of white light appeared and vanished in a moment like lightning. But Bruce realized it wasn't some ordinary lightning because it was so bright that it lit up the entire space around them. The jet flew for another 30 minutes when they realized it was the same cloud they had encountered before, but in a cylindrical shape now. The aircraft was flying through its center. It was about one mile wide and seemed endless. Bruce realized that he could never get out of that trap, but eventually he saw the light at the end of the tunnel. He kept the jet straight ahead and was almost out of that nightmare. But suddenly, unexplainable things started happening. The walls of the cloud tunnel started to become narrow and they kept closing in. The passengers out of the blue started to feel something similar to weightlessness and all of the navigational instruments malfunctioned along with the needles spinning like crazy. It was just like the jet was controlled by something else or it was moving inside some kind of current as the flyers witnessed complete chaos. All of the attempts that Bruce made to take control of the jet failed, but he kept flying through the tunnel tenacious to get out of there alive and live to tell this tale. Bruce was running out of time as the walls kept narrowing and got smaller and smaller, wrapping just like a vortex. Bruce had to get out this fast as he was running out of time. The next few seconds were the most intense and dramatic of his life. He burst out of this trap and the passengers let out a big sigh of relief. Bruce quickly grabbed the radio and contacted the ground control as he wanted them to determine his location. But when the dispatcher looked at the big screen, his face concocted with puzzlement. Bruce's jet wasn't on the radar, as if it was invisible. But then the dispatcher notified them that the jet was already near Florida. Bruce was completely shocked by this piece of information, and he couldn't believe it. The distance that was supposed to be covered was 400 kilometers, and the whole trip usually took around like 90 minutes. Shockingly, this time it only took like 47 minutes to reach the destination. The model of plane could only cruise at 180 miles per hour, and if you do the math, you would realize that this was physically impossible. Bruce thought that the dispatcher had made a mistake, but when the clouds dispersed, he saw that he really was over Miami. As the plane landed safely, it was time to figure out this mystery. So what actually happened on that flight? Bruce examined the remaining fuel, and after a short calculation, he was even more perplexed. The aircraft hadn't gone through the amount of fuel it should have. As Bruce was a very experienced aviator, he couldn't be wrong. By his early 20s, he had already traveled 600 hours of flight. All of this, the evidence at hand just indicated that Bruce's jet skipped almost half the entire distance. The man pondered on this bizarre occurrence for a long time. He even consulted with experts, but he never got the exact answers to his questions. So Bruce came up with his own theory and wrote a book about it. 
Bruce thought it all came down to this electric fog with white flashes. But other experts introduced a hypothetical concept called dark energy, which they deemed responsible for this incident. Yes, it's the same dark energy which is responsible for the expansion of the universe. This energy could have made time-space into a black hole, along with forming this estranged tunnel. They believe Bruce accidentally hit it, but fortunately, he got out alive. That's how he reached the destination so fast. But this dark energy is just one of the theories that is attempting to explain the unexplainable. To this day, there is no correct answer to how Bruce was able to travel that distance in such a short time. But don't lose hope. There were some details that could be explained. There were 84 sunspots that were recorded that day, as well as a huge solar wind moving at almost 440 miles per hour. This would ultimately cause disturbances on the Earth's magnetic sphere. This could upset the plane's instruments and radars. So Bruce's theory about electric fog could be right. And the answers to these weird clouds is just that these are pretty common things in such areas. So the bizarre thing in front of Bruce could be just two massive air currents crashing into each other. But so far, no one has been able to figure out how the plane got to Miami so fast. Maybe in the future, the truth may come out, but right now, it remains a mysterious riddle of the Bermuda Triangle. It is still not the most shocking incident to happen there. In 1945, a total of five planes disappeared into the Bermuda Triangle all at the same time. On December 5th, some Navy pilot students were training in that area and they couldn't find their way back to the base and got lost. The people on the ground just assumed they ran out of fuel. However, the circumstances were very strange to believe in this theory. The students were under the supervision of an experienced lieutenant who couldn't have let them go so far that they get lost. He had 2,500 flight hours. There is still debate going on about this incident. They named it Flight 19. Three years later, a passenger jet, which had 29 passengers and three crew members on board, was scheduled to travel from Puerto Rico to Miami, disappeared in that same area. Before you assume about things like weather could have been severe, I would like you to know that the weather was clear as crystal that day. But experts established when the plane was about 50 miles off the coast of Miami, they could have been hit by a strong wind that knocked it off. Later, some divers found the remains of the similar-looking plane in the waters, but since it was lacking details and registrations, no one could actually confirm that it was the same missing plane. Next month, in January 1948, another jet went missing in Bermuda. There were 25 passengers and six crew members who just vanished into thin air. The tragic incidents and disappearance of this plane and countless others remain unsolved to this date.